<laughs> bedroom studio setups and bedroom studio bedroom studio setups are often underrated and no 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 no, no. all right let's try that again bedroom studio setups very underrated and often very underestimated now, i'm sure just like i have you're probably working out of i don't know some sort of bedroom or spare room home studio setup now with the right intentions and careful considerations and smashing the like button for the youtube algorithm you can actually turn a bedroom or spare room into a songwriting and music production factory Back in high school, when I was figuring out this whole recording music thing, I played in and recorded a lot of different bands. One of those bands was called Adelaide. Shout out to my buddies in Adelaide. One of my friends, Ryan, was the singer of that band, and he is a computer and software genius. He also slays at songwriting and music production. And, and the pop music, I never saw that coming. So luckily when I was out in LA, he invited me over to come check out his spot. Like many of you, his entire setup is in his spare room of his apartment. And in this room, Ryan actually writes, produces, and sings on music for pitch. And these songs have been placed on channels like the Disney Channel and on ads for companies like Red Bull and many more. I applaud you, Ryan. Thank you for having me out and letting me come check out your spot. If you guys want to go check out and follow Ryan, the links are down there in the description right below. When you scroll down, you'll see there's a red button that says subscribe. You're going to want to press that button and press that little bell next to it. And then you can go check out his links in the description. And yeah, let's go, uh, let's go check out his minimal spare bedroom music writing factory. <laughs> so I am predominantly songwriting. Um, writing melodies. Oh, this is nice, dude. For other people, yeah. This is really nice. This is your minimal setup. So I have Hackintosh Boy running Catalina. That box down there? Oh, yeah. Is the computer? Yeah, custom built and runs Windows and Mac. So, I mean, I'm a Logic Boy, so. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so from there, we have it going into the UAD Arrow which I recently picked up, I love it. I upgraded from this guy, which is my workhorse for a long time, the Steinberg 22, UR 22. Uh-huh. Yeah, I upgraded to the Arrow, love it, the Pre's, great, love it. And then Mike, you're kind of a little bit more than budget, Mike, but it's not too crazy. This is a, a AKG 214. Got uh, the blue boom arm. Oh yeah. How do you like that arm? Oh, I love it. This it's is awesome, right? This is amazing for efficiency. This oh yeah. Like, just throw it over there, and then like if I if I come up with like a, a melody idea or a quick little thing, I'm just wink, and then ah, so great. Yeah, this is great. And then like if I'm recording somebody else, like more serious setup. I mean, this thing does an all right job. You know, I mean, I'm in a small room, so I'm gonna get a little room noise. You, you, yeah. Typically pay, take that out in post or whatever. Yeah, that's but. great. So you're doing songwriting and tracking vocals and doing like production stuff in here. Yeah, so I'll get sent like beat packs. I will write melodies for other people, you know, um, send it out, write for pitch, that type of stuff. Some of the stuff you write goes to TV, is that right? Or uh, picture? Yeah, so last year I did um, a Disney show called Shook, and that was wrote two songs for them, so that made it uh, online. I believe I don't know if it aired on TV or if it was like a web series, but um, I recorded everything uh, actually in this room. Yeah, no, no fancy studio for a Disney show. We did it all in here. Yeah, I brought the singer in here. We worked. <laughs> I think we got it all done in like two days. That's amazing. We tracked everything in here, and then I did the vocal production for that, and then sent it off to the, the, the squad. That, that's awesome. What kind of desk is this? Is this like a, a little custom thing you got on top there for your Furman? Yeah, so everything is very, you know, how, how can I put something together DIY very quickly? Just the Furman, and I just have this controlling the monitors. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> and that's like probably the, the lowest tier of the Furman. I just wanted to switch. Yeah. Rather than reaching back to the rockets every time I need to. Yeah, I feel you, bro. And I've had these rockets like 
since I started making music, and I, I think I, I think like they're them. good. Yeah, they're like the five inches, and they good for this room size. What are these speaker stands? How did you? These are one of my latest cops, and this is life changing. These yeah. Things. So obviously, you're living in an apartment, small room. You don't have a whole lot to work with, right? Right. Oh wait, you want to pause? We could. Yeah, yeah. Get the. I gotta go get the beer guy. Oh yeah, beer run. Beer run. Yeah. So. Let me get a good look at these. So they connect to the desk. You, or do you drill them into the desk or do they grip to the desk? They are grips, so they're little knobs if you see on the under, underside here. Um, okay, so just like the blue arm. Yeah, they're like the little screw boys that sort of tighten it, you know, get the tension. Yeah, yeah. I was looking for something to clear up the clutter on the desk. Like, yeah, I have, you know, speaker stands I could put on either side of the thing, but then where am I gonna put, you know, computer? and the guitars, so. Floor space is such, like so many things take up space on the floor, so any way to get it off the ground is crucial. Oh, absolutely, and then, or you have them sitting on the desk, like I had, you know, just bricks. <laughs> and they were on bricks, but it, then you lose all that space, so these are amazing. These are a Gator, I think they're called like Gator Frameworks. Nice. And the, yeah, these are super heavy duty, and Life-changing. Adjustable, you can tilt them. You can tilt, you can go up and down, you can swivel. I've never seen these before, this is really I cool. I know. So I was looking for a solution for so long and finally, I finally found a product that looked like it did one. It's a hard Google look. Yeah. Speaker, desk, standy boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the dual monitor set up. Yep, so this is actually also somewhat new. It's hard to see here, but I have a... They're both, it's one arm mount with it's two arms. Another one of those twisty things, kind of like these, but yeah, two rotating arms holding up both of these monitors. And I've had this for a bit too. Is that 32 board. inches? It's a 32 inch Woo! 4K, and then that's a... 27? Yes, 27. If you're wondering why it's vertical, vertical. is because, There's yeah. no space. Well, that. I didn't even think about that. But I use, it, <laughs> I use it for like coding software. That's like my side gigs. Yeah, when I, I was doing live streaming for a bit and having a, like, cause sometimes you share your desktop and having another screen to like put on a different desktop to move like the stream OBS and like the other software, oh, yeah. putting that over there so you can read the comments, but like you can still have your Pro Tools session open was a big sort of like, how do I do this or, yeah, with one like, screen? You have a session going and then you want to put up like, Spotify, you want to show somebody something or yep. texts, you know, whatever. Having two screens is hard to go back from. So it's worth it to, you know, if you're on a small budget, it's worth it to invest in just good products. They're going to last you forever. So yeah, I'm definitely a believer in that. Over here, just a little, like a Behringer um, headphone splitter. So okay. I run a lot of sessions in here. It's good to have extra headphones. People want to listen. So this is nice. So you, do you have other singers come in more often than you, because you sing. I sing, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm not like an artist. Or, right. But I like to do demos for them and then. Have them come in yeah, and it? Yeah, basically. But no, I mean, I would say that most of the time I am, I'm just demoing here by myself. Like, yeah. So these are, once again, if you're on a limited budget, Squire is the way to go. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a Squire Fender Fender Telly that I actually bought for my girlfriend. Uh, nice. I seem to be no, using, I, using I, it a lot more. No, I, I totally understand. I bought a drum set for my wife too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a. You know, it stays in my studio, and she's secret, never played it. But. Present for yourself, but <laughs> <laughs> this is what I I used to play on oh, in stepdaughter, gorgeous. and this is yeah like a Yamaha classical guitar. I've seen a lot of use. That's beautiful. Um, no pickup or anything. I used to have one, one of those like bridge pickups. Uh huh. That would, it was like almost like a little microphone. So this is a Yamaha? Yeah, a Yamaha D, I think. I don't know, it's been forever. Usually it says in the sound hole. But yeah, I mean, it's just so simple. A C40. It's just so simple and sounds great. Yeah, beautiful. And I don't know, like classical guitars are fun. They're a lot. I like them a lot better than steel string acoustic guitars because interesting. They just have like that warm sound, like Sue George type, you know, finger style. Yeah. Um, this is my very first guitar I ever owned, probably when I was like 12 or 13. Nice. It is also a Squire Fender Strat Squire 
What kind of strings are those? These are flat, I think these are flat wounds. Ah. I was really into jazz and stuff uh, in high school, so I got really onto these flat wounds. Just this nice sound. They're definitely harder on your fingers, but yeah. I just love the way they sound. But yeah, I've modified, I put humbuckers in here, um, and then apparently lost all the knobs. <laughs> Next it, side it has a strange again. sound, the humbucker on a, on a strat. Yeah. And I, I like it. It's like funky. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. It's a little funky. Um, and then this is a recent pickup. I bought it on Craigslist here in LA. Some guy in Hollywood. And it is, yeah, a P-Bass, Fender P-Bass. Ooh, yeah. And this is, this is fun. Um, I wanted it because, yeah, occasionally when I do produce beats, like, it's just so hard to find a plugin that does, like, finger, fingered bass well. Yeah. That, that funky. That funk, you know? Yeah. So you do those and then you produce in Logic. I do. Which which Logic are you in? Do you know? Latest and greatest. Latest and greatest? The new Ableton version? Yeah. Well, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a tech dork, so I'm obsessed with seeing app updates. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. me too. I'm a, I'm a 10.5.1 and I'm, yeah, I'm running Catalina. Dude, I'm right there with you. I think it's... You gotta just go all in, you know what I mean? I, I've had the new iOS for like five months now, the beta version. Uh -huh. I'm so in love with it. I just like being on the cutting edge of yeah. all new technology. Yeah, I man. love new features, it just feels nice. So, so on the side, you do, um, well, what's your side gig? Because I'm going to butcher it if I try to explain. Oh, outside of music. Yeah. So, uh, I am a professional software developer for about kind of eight, going on eight. Nine years probably now. Wow. Yeah. So I'm a like a backend guy. So yeah. I do a lot of server infrastructure stuff, a lot of stuff with uh, in AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, and it's a it's for a startup down near Venice. Uh huh. And uh, so I maintain their whole background stuff and develop their APIs. I mostly am a Java developer. I've been coding Java like forever. That's the thing that pays me when this one doesn't. You know? Yeah, well this is the <laughs> this is the passion. Yeah. This is the passion that has luckily started to pan out. So yeah nice. man, that's so cool that you get the Disney gig and I'm sure you got some connections through that. And... Yeah, no, and I did some stuff. I've done probably like 16 songs for Red Bull at this point. That actually, oh wow. They actually have my voice on. Oh wow. Yeah, which is, I'm yeah. always a little anxious, like, I don't know, Dude, I don't do the artist thing, I like be behind the scenes. But, but you know what's cool is now <laughs> with the licensing stuff, you can be both. Like you don't have to go on the road or do anything, you can literally just make music as an artist and then just only license it. Yeah. Like with position and music bed and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I mean, they've made it easier than ever. But yeah, the Red Bull stuff is, is fun too. It's always like taking me out of my comfort zone. What are your favorite plug-in packs or sample pack? So I didn't start taking, making music, like actually, you know, working at a DAW seriously until about 2016. So yeah. this is all knowledge I've uh, accumulated over the past four years or so. Waves was probably the first pack I got. I, so I started getting some Waves plugins and uh -huh. my friends all use Waves. So that was kind of like, the, I'm still using just Waves pretty much. And then I would say, yeah. So, I mean, all my vocal chain here, I have uh, like I'm using Waves Tune, the real time one. Okay. Uh, I love this. I used to use um, who was the other one? Antares. Yeah, I used to use the Antares like the EFX, just like the really simple one. I think I moved over to this, and this has been great. Um, yeah, I have the CLA 76, which is in the Waves bundle, and the CLA vocals, vocals, all the Chris Lordality stuff, which is just sort of my basic chain and tried and true. It's I don't love using like these these plugins, these all in ones, uh -huh. but um, I just got a good sound at it, and if it doesn't, you know, it's not broke, don't, don't fix it. I used Contact for Contact for, uh, for a minute. I probably used it in a, quite a few projects, but I'm slowly starting to like Contact a little less. It's just, it uh, feels like it's aged. Yeah. And um, there's there's other stuff out there, and I actually really like the new EXS plugin within Logic. Okay, so you're using like the Logic samplers with your own samples? Uh, or, or their samples. Yeah, or sample packs galore these days online. Yeah. Uh, I like to use my own sounds or manipulate others when I can, but yeah, the EXS, the new EXS plugin on Logic is great. Cool. They, they really, it's, it's pretty easy and straightforward to sample now. Delays, all H delays, wave stuff, like I said. 
Also, I worry about compatibility a lot because like, yeah. if I don't like a plugin and I want to un uninstall it and I try to dig up that project from like three years ago, yeah, I try to keep it to one to Waves because I pretty much know I'll always have Waves yeah. going. Waves is like just a really great toolbox and it's just a lot of stuff in there. I love Sound Toys. Yeah, Sound also. Toys is, is the jam. Little Ultra Boy is like... I've been, yeah, the past couple of videos, everyone has said the Ultra Boy. Oh, oh and the Radiator. The ra you know, I haven't really messed with all, I mean, they have these really great plugins. I love their stuff. But I use the Decapitator. That's my, that's my name potatoes. I use it, no, no matter what I'm doing, I have the Decapitator on an aux. Little Ultra Boy is just so stupid, simple. I mean, Waves has one, like an Ultra Pitch Shift, I believe, that does some pitching and some formatting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like the algorithm here on this one. It just sounds cleaner. Do you have a, a place for people to like see your work or like hit you up or follow you or or like products or any any way for people to just give you money? <laughs> <laughs> people can always contact me through Instagram, Instagram if you want. Yeah. Ryan Fetus? Yeah, at Ryan Fetus. This is a, I've had this forever. This is just uh, a Korg Nano Key 2. I've had this. A Korg, Korg you said? Yeah, Korg, Korg Nano Key 2. Okay. I love this thing because you can travel with it. Yeah. It's just like, it's so light and I just plug it in. If you have any sort of really quick MIDI ideas, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I use it a lot to just find the key of the song, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, this is great, but whenever I'm actually doing something seriously, oh okay. Um, if I had more desk space, obviously I'll keep this up here, but I'm somewhat limited. This is just a an audio key station, 49 key. I had like researched these all over the place, and yeah. been, like you know, there's the ones with the pads, like yeah, yeah. the sample pads and the really nice ones. I think, uh, like you said earlier, Arturia has like some really nice ones. I think yeah. I think Native Instruments okay. has some nice ones. Yeah. After doing research for like two months, I'm like, I don't need any of that. But yeah, yeah. Sweetwater is my- You got uh, from Sweetwater. I love okay, Sweetwater, nice. yeah. Uh, Matt Brooks, shout out. It's not sponsored. <laughs> Wanna be sponsored. No, no, I just love them, man. They just have like <laughs> cool people. And like, like for instance, this thing uh, I got from Sweetwater originally. Uh -huh. And then like one of the rubber pads fell off the bottom. So it was like rocking. Yeah. And I it was bugging the crap out of me. And then so I looked up the rubber pads and it was gonna cost me like twenty dollars to get a two like five like tiny little rubber feet. Yeah. And I hit up Sweetwater and I was like, hey, my rubber pads got. Kind of, they sent me another, another whole, stand, whole mic stand. Yeah, for free. Oh, nice. Oh, like, that's great. Yeah, you can't beat that. You know, that human element. Did you buy a pack for these pads on the wall? Is this like a? Yeah. Also Sweetwater. I mean, they don't really do much. Um, they look cool. I tried to get the, you know, the first reflections here from the monitors. Uh -huh. at, at one point, I like went really crazy and like measured everything, did all the the geometry. The golden ratio. Yeah, yeah. Brought out my uh, whatever those things called protractors. <laughs> your, your, your calculator. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I measured everything. But this is nice. This actually has made uh, a bit of a. Uh, improvement. Yeah. And just listening things back from the monitor. You just catch that first. Well, that you're, you're not working as like a full time mixer. You know what I mean? You're just, you're, no. you're making tracks, you're doing writing, you're doing production stuff. No. It's not that necessary to have like a fully treated room to like do music production and songwriting. Yeah. Well, you just want um, to be comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't mix on rockets, like mix seriously on yeah. rockets. Yeah. Rockets are fun. And yeah. I like them. They, you know, they're V shaped and um, they're, they're compact, they're they're affordable, they look cool. Yeah, I don't need Yamahas and like a sub, you know. Yeah. This is just, they're good. They're good standbys. Headphones, I mean, you're running all that sub. So you got all that. Your, Those oh. are the 50s, the MX-50s. Yeah. And then the 7601s, I think. These are the Sony's. 75, I don't know, I don't remember. I love those Sony's though, these are great. Cables all racked up. You got a oh, sweet, yeah. sweet this, little couch. This is actually really cool down here. Uh, I saw in one of your other videos, one of those dudes had oh, like yeah. a, a whole back spot to hide the cables, but this is an Ikea table. Uh -huh. And it's like a step up from particle board, you know? It's just like, yeah. I have nowhere to put my cables though, and I have a crap load of, I hate yeah. cables going everywhere. Me too. So this is actually a cop I got on, on Amazon. I can't exactly remember what it is, but. A little cable management tray? Yeah, it's actually. I should have organized this better before you came, but it's all gonna fly out. 
but it has its own. Oh, he just powered up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta fix that. But it has its own little power strip here. Yeah. And then you can sort of strap the cables to this. It's really hard to see. Without. Oh wow! So did the power strip come with this whole thing? No, the power strip. It's made by the. It's all made by the same company. But you get this is your run of the mill. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it's not this janky. No, this is awesome. What a cool little hack. Yeah, I hate clutter just as much as the next guy. Do you use this little amp back here? This black sign off? Uh, actually, that, so that was part of the gift for my girlfriend. It's oh, it's a, cool. It's a tube. A little tube amp? Yeah, and it's actually, it sounds pretty great. But... All right, so what do we think? Uh, serious question here. Uh, mouse or trackpad? Mouse, all day long. Mouse all day long? Why do you got the trackpad? Uh, logic is weird, like if you have audio pulled up, you uh -huh. know, just zooming and unzooming, I just, it's just easier. I'm sure there's shortcuts to do it, but I started with the trackpad and then elevated to oh, the Oh yeah, because you don't have a numeric keypad. That's right. right. Yeah, no. I, I know the Pro Tools people need full keyboards, right? Yeah, well, just like normal people need, you know. <laughs> I'm, I, is everybody an accountant? I, all I, of <laughs> I live, I, I, I can't function without a key, without keyboard short. Everything I do. Like if I have to touch the mouse, I'm already annoyed. Cause it's it's such a handicap <laughs> I know. for me. I heard about like NMI when they're teaching you Pro Tools. They like two they, clicks? No. They just one. no. They take the mouse. There's no mouse. And then you have to learn everything. Yeah, they're they like, have, like that overlay. Here's how you turn the computer on yeah. with your keyboard. Here's how you restart the computer. Here's how you open Finder. Here's how you open apps. And then and then you get into the logic and Pro Tools shortcuts and all that. But I'm just busting your balls. No, I, I want, um, I actually want, I've been tossing around the idea of getting a trackpad, but I've always been so anti-trackpad because I just love using a, the Apple Magic Mouse, which is overpriced I, and under. I can't stand it. I hate trackpads. The mouse. Oh, no, the Magic Mouse? The Magic Mouse. I had one and I gave it to her because I couldn't. Which one did you have? The, the white one or the black one? Because the black one the is a lot cooler. cooler. It looks cooler, but <laughs> you uh, can you can. I had the white one because I got it used on eBay. I'm, I'm cheap, so you can forgive the flaws if it looks really cool. <laughs> I just it, I feel like I could never get the the like the gestures to work right. Yeah. And I don't know. It felt weird. So this is this is really cheap. It's Logic, Logic G305, set. and the wireless is like the, really there's no lag. There's no lag at all. That's great. Well, you got your. USB hub right here. Yep. And then the mouse is right here. <laughs> Tell me about this chair. This chair is gangster. <laughs> Gamer chair status. This is an Omega chair. Is there a secret lab? Omega? It's comfortable, man. This is very adjustable. When you work in music, you spend a lot of time sitting in a chair. And coding. Yeah. Yeah. Coding. My whole life is in front of the screen for sure. <laughs> So might as well like invest a little bit. I think it's like 400, 500 something. But. Cool, man. Well, thanks for showing me your, your, your rig, dude. This is cool. Absolutely. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Bye. Bye. High five. See you later.